Good morning. You're welcome to another episode of The Heart of the Matter. On today's episode, we're talking about child development. Now, you know how important that is for a nation. And with me to, to, to talk about child development is Helen Obiageli Oshikoya. Helen, you're welcome to The Heart of the Matter. Tell us a little bit about Helen Obiageli Oshikoya. Um, what is it that you do in relation to child development? Um, thank you very much for inviting me to your program. Um, basically, as you said, my name is Helen Obiagili Oshikoya. First and foremost, I'm a lawyer of uh, 24 years at the Nigerian Bar. And after practicing law for several years, I decided to look into the society and find an area that we can or I can contribute positively in order for us to move forward as a nation. Um, it's not everybody that needs to be in government that is able to impact or make a change. So basically what I did is that I um, developed what they call a psychoeducational service. I went back to the UK, I got a master's in um, social science, specializing in child development, mental health care, and incorporating how a society should interlock with um, mental health and with education. Okay. Now that, that seems quite a distance to go from law into something that's more scientific, if you like. Um, what was it that spurred you on? Yes, you wanted to make an impact, but what was it that made you choose something that affects children? Well, um, all my life I've actually looked after children, you know, in one capacity or the other. And I feel that our children are not being nurtured and they're not being cared for. They're being cared for physically, but they're not being cared for mentally. And with the way the world is going, if a child is not nurtured mentally, it's going to find, or that child will find it very difficult to succeed. So if we don't concentrate on that area, we're going to lose a lot of our human resources. Okay, I'm told that, that if a child doesn't start learning from the age of, say, two or three, which is when their cognitive skills begin to develop, that child may never attain or achieve their full potential. Is that true? I don't believe that. Okay. Every child has a potential and every child will fulfill the potential. It depends on how society and how the family and how the church grooms that child okay. in order for the child to meet the full potential which is, is bound to happen. Okay, let's talk about some of the problems. What are the problems you saw that spurred you into uh, child psychoeducation? Okay, first and foremost, I noticed that um, children are not checked developmentally. You know, we have children born, they leave the hospital, and, you know, months down the line, parents start noticing problems. Parents tend to take the children to hospitals, but they still don't get any, any sort of relief to be able to... So, so we can immunize children, yes. that's one of the areas of development. This is not to do with their physical, physical well-being, no, no. more their psychological and mental well-being. Okay. Because that's what makes the child, okay. and that's what makes the adult. Okay. So I decided that um, I had a lot of children who, you know, I did lessons for, and I noticed that they still weren't doing well, even though they had all the lessons and resources okay. put in place. I now looked deeper, and now realized that a lot of these children had issues with regards to the way their brain was functioning. Okay, so I hear this word ADD, attention deficit disorder. That's the kind of problem that you want to solve. That's one of the many problems. We have several problems, as we, you know, developmental problems. Um, the most crucial one and the most devastating is actually autism. What, what, what is autism? Um, autism is a neurological um, um, disorder that actually affects a child globally. You know, in some cases it actually affects a child physically, but in most time it affects a child mentally. It's, uh, it's, it's not a sickness. No, it's not a sickness. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a disease. It's a disorder. You know, so basically it actually can, um, you know, prevent a child from actually functioning in totality. Okay. So things like autism affect a child. You have things like Down syndrome, 
Okay. You have cerebral palsy. What is Down syndrome? Down syndrome is a, is, is a genetic um, a malfunction. It, it, it also involves global impairment of a child and it also prevents a child from functioning at its full potential. Then you have what they call cerebral palsies, which is um, a neurodevelopmental um, um, delay which actually starts most times when a child is born it normally is caused by some insults to the brain um, maybe the you know didn't the child didn't breathe when he was being you know after birth or uh, you know a, a brain trauma of some sort and then it actually affects all motor skills of the child what we do or what we have decided to do as a company um, as a, a psychoeducational company is to address these issues and that's through a process what we call developmental surveillance Okay, so, so now there are some other problems that you haven't yet listed. Yes. Like dyslexia? Well, dyslexia is what they call a specific. Okay. And it's normally not a delay. It's what they call a specific learning disability, okay. which if we start from developmental surveillance in the hospital, I will now take you through the process okay. and how we get to dyslexia. Okay, so let's go through the process. The okay. Process. Um, pediatrics, the company structure we address what they call um, developmental pediatrics. Okay. At developmental pediatrics, we screen children for developmental delays. Okay. At that point, children can actually be detected to see whether there is anything going on with the child that will prevent... What, what are the typical methods of detection? Yeah. Well, basically what we do is that we do instrument-rated, evidence-based psychometric testing. Okay. Um, what happens is that we check the child's eyes, okay. we check the child's ears, we check the spinal cord, we check um, physical, all the physical, uh, fine grocery, um, 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 fine and, and gross motor skills, and then we social connection. Okay. You know, um, we ask the mother certain so as questions. A, as a baby, as a baby as you a can baby. check for social connection? Yes. Okay. Sometimes the baby doesn't suck the breast, okay. and even when he's sucking, he's not communicating with the mother, no eye contact, um, a little bit detached. Mm -hmm. You know, that. You, that is quite evident. Or when the mother comes to the room, the baby behaves as if you know there's nobody there. And even if baby is constantly crying all the time, no matter how much the mother soothes, soothes the child. So we can actually check um, if you if a baby was born um, due to some sort of stress, as in um, you know through a cesarean section. We normally request that the baby comes at four weeks. If there is no stress at all or no trauma at six weeks. Where the signs start to show is normally through head control. You know, where the baby's head is not actually um, um, moving the way it's supposed to be. That gives us an indication that something is going on, right? So at that point, we put other things in place. But I want us to hold there for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The second part is what they call child and adolescent. That's where we go into schools and actually perform what they call school health. Okay. Where children what are sort checked of ages these? throughout child, adolescent. So you're looking at from probably three years okay. to probably say most secondary school, 18, about 18, where we check the physical development of the child and also the mental development of the child. Okay. And the psychometric tests, which we do as well, whereby if a child was not detected at the pediatric stage, we can actually pick the child up through the school okay. health process. Okay. And we're going to hold that thought for a moment as we take a break. Viewers, stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment on the Heart of the Matter. Watch your favorite Heart of the Matter episodes online at www.theheartofthematter.tv. Also, check out exciting behind-the-scenes photos. Leave your comments and like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Heart of the Matter, where we're talking about child development, and our guest, Obiageli Oshikoya, is a, 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 um, a child psychoeducational, uh, runs a child psychoeducational uh, company, and, and we were talking about screening. And just before we went on break, you talked about child screening and adolescent screening. Let, let's, you know, talk a little bit more about how we can detect uh, uh, um, problems in a child. Well, basically, most children's problems end up being physical initially. 
Okay. That's why we always suggest that we check physical. So we check the ears, we check the eyes, we check for scoliosis, and then we check scoliosis. What's scoliosis. That? Scoliosis is um, a spinal cord. Yes, a spinal cord um, 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 impairment, which actually collapses the child's posture. Okay. And it's, it's quite a painful um, um, an element and it's always good to catch on time because if it's caught on time, the child will wear what they call a back brace which will help the spinal cord to keep erect so that the child's posture will not become bent. Um, you normally find some children that are slanted yeah. you know, and with this hunch, that's a form of scoliosis and you can actually pick that up as early as um, six years old. Okay. Yeah? So, it normally starts as um, a physical. Sometimes children are not doing well in school because they're not seeing, you know, they're not seeing the board. Sometimes they're not doing well in school because they're not hearing the teacher. So you need to rule out all those. And then once those are ruled out, then you can actually sit down and address the mental part of the child's okay. educational stand. At that point, we start looking for things like specific learning disabilities, which is the dyslexia, which you what about hyperactivity? Because I've known some parents complain their children are, you know, and some of them are told just cut down the sugar. Well, hyperactivity as in HAD is actually a mental health problem. And it is quite um, devastating because it, trans it, it, it continues throughout the child's life. And it actually prevents a child from learning. You need attention yeah. to learn. You need concentration to learn. So if the concentration and the attention of a child is not there. You're basically looking at a child that is not capable of learning. Most times what we do is that when we see children who actually do have hyperactive activity, we now refer them to see a child and adolescent psychiatrist. I will say psychiatrist in the sense that it is the psychiatrist that deals with brain issues, okay. but not in this instance dealing with a brain problem as in illness. So the psychiatrist will now determine the extent of the hyperactivity. If the hyperactivity is to the extent that the child can be a harm to themselves and to others, then treatment will now be put in place. Treatment normally will be medication and what they call therapy, behavior modification therapy. That combined should bring the hyperactivity down. So now, we have an opportunity when a, a child is a baby yes. to do the first lot of screaming. Yes. And then when, it, when the child is a child... It's toddler, school okay. age. So, so parents need to be aware yes. that even if your child is, to all the par parents is normal, yes. the child still needs to be screened in case there's something there that they haven't detected which would help to detect early rather than late. Late. Okay. Now, now you can go further yes. to the adolescent stage. What do you do for, for adolescents? Adolescents, we check psychological well-being, depression, peer pressure, social awareness, confidence, things that can actually bring an adolescent down. Working memory, how functional. So, so what you're saying, is if a child has um, social challenges, yes. it may not necessarily be due to their environment per se, but actually due to a problem that they were born with. Um, it's normally developed. developed. Yeah. It's normally developed because it's, it, it's a developmental thing. Okay. Okay. And in most cases, in adolescence, it normally goes on into mental illness. Yes. So we need to, the adolescents are, constant, we need to concentrate, um, you know, quite extent, you know, intensively on them because they are the most Mostly. at risk, yes. Okay. Now, let us say we've detected problems now. Okay. What do we do to remedy the situation, say, in the children to start with, in the infants? You detect a child has a problem connecting with the mother. Okay. What, for instance, would you do? What are the things that you would do as an expert to remedy that situation? Well, what we do is that where we pick up children who actually have red flags, the process, the, how the process really works is that, you know, when the child comes with a six week check, they go to the pediatrician. Yeah. The pediatrician will now send the child to me, we'll do the checks, 
and then the child will have their immunization done. The results will now go back to the pediatrician. The pediatrician will now review it if there is a cause for concern. And at that stage, normally at six weeks, the cause for concern will normally be physical. We now put in what they call physiotherapy. That is where early intervention strategies come into play. So at six weeks, the main problem would be physiotherapy. Because as you now get the child moving physically, the child tends to bond with the mother because we will teach the mother some strategies how to soothe the child and bring the child closer to her. Okay. What about some of the other things that you might detect in children? Let us say, because I think this is one that's usually detected a little early, Down syndrome. Down syndrome from birth can be detected. So what we normally do is we don't even wait. We counsel the mother, educate her as to the child's condition, and then constantly, periodically screen her for depression. Her the mother. Her the mm. mother. Because you, as a mother with a child with a genetic problem, most times she depression is, Yes, and depression will set in. Mm. And if you have a mother that's depressed, she cannot actually take care of the child, the child who has the problem. So our concentration at that point will not be with the child, it will be with the mother. Okay. So we get the mother up and running and then we now address the child. What can be done for the child? A child with Down syndrome, what we do is physiotherapy, straight. Yep. We need the child up and running and moving. Speech therapy. Speech therapy not with regards to speech. Speech therapy with regards to oral motoring issues because they have problems swallowing, okay. they have problems sucking. They have problems, you know, you know, um, bringing and um, 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 holding saliva. So a speech therapist will come in at that time and deal with oral control. Okay. When the oral control is sorted out, we now school. Okay. We advocate that children with any form of delay or disorder must be trained in a mainstream school. And that is what we have done. We have units in various schools that support these children. Now, a lot of people insist that the child with those uh, uh, issues. issues must go to a special school. Yeah. Um, so, so why? Because they would say that the child will be slower mm -hmm. than, than, the, than its classmates and mm -hmm. that alone can have problems. So why are you why advocating you that? Advocate because this? the best way to actually deal with developmental delays and disorder is integration it's called inclusion okay. you include the child and besides um, the, the the children's act in Nigeria specifically states that every child has the right to be educated despite the fact that the child has a need so if a child is integrated into mainstream the progress is faster okay. between zero to five years old children are not meant to be in special schools mm -hmm. the only time a child should go to a special school is where it has been established beyond all reasonable doubt with mental retardation that the child cannot cope in mainstream schools. But I can assure you that if early intervention is put into place, there is no way a child will have to be sent to a special school. Special schools in the UK and America are now meant for children who develop psychosis okay. later on in life with their disability. So zero to five mainstream. No, no special schools? No. Inclusion. Now, what about some of the other problems? What about the ones you detect in, in children at the school age? At the school age, same thing, learning support. Most times, children at school age, what we detect is specific learning disability. What about, say, dyslexia? Dyslexia is, as I said, a specific learning disability. And all that, need, all that child needs is, first and foremost, the teacher has to be educated about the condition. Yeah. Two, time out. As in, the child has to have a structured um, curriculum which addresses that area of the dyslexia. What is dyslexia? Dyslexia is you can't read or write. So how do you address that? You take the child back to what they call phonetical awareness, where the child learns phonetics all over again so that the child can now meet up and start reading and writing. It will be slower 
than most children. But if the child is in a learning support unit, he goes into the learning support unit, has his program, and then comes back and plays with his peers. Psychologically, it's better for the child and better for the parent. Okay. What about the issues that develop later on in, in the child's adolescence? Okay. Normally what happens in adolescence is what they call adolescent schizophrenia. When that happens, it's treatment. But that does not say the child can't go to school. But the child cannot go to school if the child had not been treated. Treatment is medication and what they call psychotherapy or what they call cognitive behavioral therapy. Because when you're talking about psychosis, you're, you, when you're talking about adolescent schizophrenia, you're looking at issues of laughing inappropriately, you know, um, 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 doing things, odd things, you know, making, um, making life difficult for everybody. What normally happens is that parents tend to look at it as he's troublesome, he's becoming a delinquent, he's this and that. Even sometimes you can actually find out that the child might even be having seizures, okay. which is actually causing that irregular behavior. So these are some of the things that have to be looked at before we come to the conclusion that that child needs to be taken out of school. Okay, now you say that the first three years yes. of a child's life are the most important, important when it comes to their psychological de development. Yes. Let me ask this question. What role, because most of the time we've talked about the mother, mm -hmm. what role does the father have in all this? The father has to be the anchor of everything. It's not good enough to say, oh, this is your child, oh, that's your problem. No, because if we're really going to investigate thoroughly and we do a genetic test, we'll find out that it's both the husband and the wife coming together that might have resolved in that delay. So fathers have to even actually be more active than the mother in caring for the child because there will be a time where the child will actually become defiant and needs a father role to actually address the issues of behavior and tantrum. A mother will be wary because apart from taking care of him needs, taking care of the child's needs, she also now has to take care of the child emotionally the father must be there to do that. Okay. Now, yeah, so... I know, I know your next question. <laughs> if there's no father, yeah. is that what you're saying? Then the, the, the mother involved or the female involved must look to a male figure to support. Yeah. The, the reason I ask that is because I found that even with children that don't have any disorders, yes. there is an effect of the absence of a father. Yes, yes. And, and so I just wanted the, the fathers that are watching us to know that, that this is not just a the mother's no, issue. No. Now, okay, now you, you see, the challenge here is one of culture. Yes. I think the average Nigerian woman, probably the average African woman, says there cannot be anything wrong with my child. I disagree with you. When I started my psychoeducational service a year ago, doctors pastors and the whole world told me nobody would check their child especially mentally i'm not the sort of person that allows things that i see to discourage me i still pushed on and i give testimony unto jesus christ today that between september last year and today i've screened over 2000 children parents are giving their children willingly if they understand what you're trying to achieve some hospitals speak, ah, no mother is going to give you a child, ah, taboos, it, 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 it's stigmatization, blah, 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 blah. But we've started in Christian schools. There's this Christian school that we're working with. There are about 500 children, and every one of those children have That's been nice tested. School. And every one of those parents are pleased today because they can sleep well, knowing fully well that their child is physically and mentally well. I think for any parent, that's a comfort. Now, for you, as, yes. as, as Obiageni Oshikoya, um, this is doing something that you feel is so valuable to society, and at the same time, it's a business, okay? T tell me, how do you feel um, about enjoying something that you, you um, love doing, and then find it pays you as well? 
First and foremost, um, I think for me as a parent, I think it's very important that I open myself to accept other children who's, who have this problem. Um, parents, people would say, you have a psychoeducational service, you don't have anything wrong with your children, why are you doing it? First and foremost, I think it's a calling. And I think that God has to actually pick you to do this job. Because one, if you have a conscience in this job, you will not make money. Okay. And two... But, but doctors make money. Yes, because... And you're... you're, be, all, you're you, I'm a clinician, doctor, yes. Yeah. But they don't have to beg them to come. If you're sick, you go to a hospital. How do you convince somebody that is not ill to come and see me? It's difficult. Mm -hmm. But if the person understands what you're trying to achieve, it will be possible. And we try our best to make it affordable. We have three hospitals that we're working with, you know, and, and I thank them so much because they've actually opened their doors to us. Um, Jellard Hospital, um, St. Nicholas Hospital, and, and, and um, um, Heritage Hospital. If you come for your developmental screening, you won't even know you're being, you're, you're charged for it because it is charged onto your bill as part it's of your postnatal. So you know fully well that you're leaving a hospital, you know, you're leaving knowing fully well that your child is whole and complete. Um, well, you're not just detecting. We are, are intervening. Going... Okay, good. Yes, because zero to five is interventionable stage. Okay. After five, it's management because it's already a disorder. Okay. We don't want children to get to disorders. We want to still be able to intervene. So you are providing a very important and very valuable service. Um, last word to the, to the viewers. What, how important is it that they get their children screened? Just tell them in 30 uh, seconds. I'm, I'm not going to be religious here, but I am a Christian and I do, whatever I do, I base it on the word of God. Um, 2 Timothy verses 3 says that God says that he gives us a spirit of not of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. So if God himself has decided that your mind is so important to him, I think as individuals and as parents, we should also key into what God has said and make sure that we keep our children's minds healthy. Thank you very much, Obi Agili. It's been a pleasure having you on the Heart Thank of the you. Matter. And we do look forward to another opportunity when we can talk about this or another subject. Thank Viewers, um, it, it, it's been great having you this week. We'll be back again next week with another episode of the Heart of the Matter. Until then, stay blessed.